Here's from Japan, I'm the Tokyo Toy Bastard, and welcome to a pickups video. Yeah! Well, I asked you guys on my YouTube community thing in a poll if you wanted to see the stuff that I grabbed, and you wanted to see it, so here it is. Uh, if you want to stick around to the very end, I will be opening the contents of the junk bag. Well, I've actually already gone through it and sorted it all out, took out all the garbage, and all the stuff that's not that interesting. So we will take a look at this at the very end of the video, so stick around for that. But until then, let's see what else I found on my toy hunt uh, yesterday. Which, by the way, if you haven't watched that toy hunt video, make sure you watch it. I will have it linked at the very end. Okay, the first three items we have here are pretty much the only non-vintage items that I picked up, aside from maybe one of the little set of things. But um, these are promotional uh, items from the Beef Bowl restaurants aka uh, uh, Gyudon or if you're familiar with like uh, places like Yoshinoya which I know they have in, in some parts of the United States basically it's like a beef bowl restaurant but this is Sukiya which is a competitor of Yoshinoya and these were promotion promotional items I believe from just within the last few years uh, this was promoting a movie uh, where I think Shin Chan and his family go to Mexico or something and these other ones I'm not sure, but they're really cool. And they, they all have like little little gimmicks that they do. So I'll demonstrate those real quick. Uh, so let's look at this one first. So this first one here is, uh, you, you put, he's got, it's like Shin Chan with maracas. Uh, you push Shin Chan down, close the lid. And it's like the, it's kind of like the barrel where you stab the swords into it. But then this one, you just push. Oh God, I got in the first one. Uh, well, you push around and then one of them will make him pop up. But yeah, there you go. Got it on the first one. Didn't waste your time. And the next one up is another little game, and it's got a little green robot inside, and uh, yeah, Shin Chan holding a bowl of sukiya there, and it's got a little ball, and it's basically just basketball. You just shoot it up there and try to try to get it into the beef bowl. I'm not very good at this. Try one more time. There we go. Got a goal. Yeah. And the last one's my favorite. It's uh, it's Shin Chan dressed as Action Kamen or as he's known in the US in the English dub, Action Bastard. Uh, partially an influence on my name. And he's got the, the beef bowl here, but when you pull it, it's got a string, and uh, he pulls it toward himself. Or if you hold the beef bowl, it pulls Chin Chan towards it, which makes more sense, unless the beef bowl's magic. But yeah, cool little, uh, cool little toys. And these, I actually picked these up uh, for someone that requested Shin Chan items, even though I do collect Shin Chan as well. So I will be grabbing a lot of Shin Chan stuff, which I will show in the future. Let's see what's next. Okay, if you watched the uh, toy hunting video, I did spend quite a bit of time in a couple of the shops that carried a lot of these uh, vintage miniature uh, omake, omake toys, basically like free prize toys that came with like little candies or snacks. Uh, between the 70s and the 80s mostly and uh, I really wanted to grab some uh, actually I ended up grabbing all of these uh, after I filmed because I went to uh, Toy Cats to visit my friend Ishi-san and he just happened to have a couple bags like laying near the cash register that he had planned on selling but they were just kind of bundled up there and I was actually looking for some because the ones that I found at Mandarake uh, were just a bit out of my price range and I've been collecting some on and off. I even did a video about the Evangelion set that I bought. But I wanted some cool cars and sci-fi things and stuff. So um, I grabbed this, a couple of the sets that he had. But uh, let me show you these real quick because these are so cool. And they're so they're so retro and, and neat. But uh, like these kind of old cheap toys. Basically these are the equivalent of like Cracker Jack toys. But uh, they're often cars. And these were all made by Glico. Guriko. Which I think I can get that on camera it says glico right there sometimes it's written in katakana but um yeah they made all these little cool little cars and like you know multi multiple simple colors um and some of these i got doubles of so i will be putting some of these for sale along with some like keshi vehicles and stuff that i picked up uh in the one of the last videos so if you're interested in that let me know and um yeah these are just really cool i think they're just cheap simple toys and some of them have like little gimmicks um for example this one it looks kind of like a mechanical bug, and uh, it's got a wheel on it that has uh, this little uh, canal. I don't know if it's called a canal. And it's got these things on the side. If you turn it, it causes this thing to, uh, the little 
the little bug mouth to move, like the little razors on it. So if you roll it, it does the same thing, but it doesn't work as well. Uh, it kind of works, but it's better if you just turn it. But it's kind of neat. A lot of these have these like interesting little functions. Uh, same thing with this one. Uh, this one's from a sci-fi. Some of these have actual names, like this one here. It says uh, Guriko in, in Katakana, and I believe this is a bit older. Um, some of these actually have like waves and, and series names. So the people that collect these, like some of these can get crazy expensive. If you watch my video, like some of these can go for hundreds of dollars. So uh, this one right here, let's see, let me get back in focus here. I know I'm unfocused. Um, this one, if you roll it across the floor, the little, the little pincer pops in and out. And then, yeah, it's got this, uh, it's got just a really simple, I oh, gotta adjust the focus again. Just got a real simple mechanical uh, thing here with the, the uh, the axle's off center, so when the wheel turns, it pushes it in and out. Just neat. I like simple things like this make me smile. Uh, here's another one here. It's like kind of like a trick car. I don't know what you call a trick car. Um, basically, it's a car, but like it's got wheels that are coming off of uh, uh, these giant platforms, so it can it can stand up like this. This is really hard to focus on these really tiny toys, and uh, you know it can also stretch out like that kind of like a inspector gadget or something it reminds me of like something inspector gadget would have now this one's really neat let me see if i can uh let me get my camera a little bit more focused down here there we go so this one's like a dinosaur and uh if you roll him he just looks like he's moseying on along <laughs> kind of bobbing his head that's really cool just really simple mechanics and the last one, this is uh, just like a balancing weight toy. It's got a car, and then it's got this giant wheel at the bottom. And uh, I don't know, this is the least interesting one to me, but, you know, science. You know, it's heavy on the bottom so it doesn't fall down. But yeah, neat little neat little toys. I love these. Uh, I'll probably do a review of my entire collection at some point once I get some more. I hope you enjoyed these. Up next, we've got this cute little wind-up Godzilla figure. Uh, made in 1988, I believe, uh, by Takara. Let's see if we can get that on cameras. You can kind of see it there. There we go. Yeah, so this is right before uh, they kind of went hard into the Heisei era with like Godzilla vs. Biollante and then later the entire Heisei series. And uh, Godzilla's still got that kind of cutesy look to him in this figure. It's really cool. Like, this is a really well-made figure and he's got the, the tail that flips up and down. And, um... So I think it originally just had like some kind of key that went to it, uh, and you could wind it up. Um, and I've already tested it, so it does work, and his mouth opens and closes. But I'm going to use a screwdriver to wind it up and demonstrate it for you. But as you know, I am collecting uh, wind-up Godzilla toys specifically, but any wind-up toy that I find it's interesting. I try to pick up, but I showed this in my video, and I almost forgot to grab it, and then I went back towards the end of the hunt and grabbed it, so... Happy to bring him home and add him to my Godzilla collection. Let's see what he does. Up next, we've just got a few little Sofabi toys here, some soft vinyl minis. Uh, in the video, you did see me dig in a soft vinyl bin uh, of mostly Ultraman junk, and I did pull out a ton of Ultramans from there that I'm going to show in a bit. Um, but I also found, uh, which I don't know if you saw them in the in the video, because I kind of missed some stuff while I was filming. And once I stopped filming, I found some better stuff. But I found these three guys in there. And so I found this little uh, Iwakura Bolton. Uh, so this is a um, just a miniature re re uh, reproduction um, by Bandai and Iwakura of the original Bullmark uh, uh, Bolton figure. And I do collect this line. And I have an Ultraman. Actually, let me grab Ultraman from my shelf over here. I already had an Ultraman, so now I've got a Bolton to go with him. Hello. And... Um, I also grabbed this Minya, uh, this just really stoned looking Minya. And I, I actually, I, I, I fucking hate Minya, but the colors on this and the expression and like the golden grill 
And the fact that I do collect this series, and I like the ones that have uh, some more color to them. Like, he just, he would look cool next to the, all the other ones from this series. Same series, Iwakura, Bullmark, uh, miniature reissues from around 2005 of the original uh, uh, late 60s, early 70s. Uh, Soft would be toys. And then I also found this little uh, Astro Boy, or as he's known here, Atom, Atomu. And um, this is a little soft vinyl toy. And uh, at first I thought he was hard plastic. And I think there was a set of these or a series of these. Uh, a friend of mine uh, named Michael showed me that he had won a couple of these with a different facial expression in an auction recently. And I do know that this was made in uh, the early 2000s, I believe, by... Uh, what does it say here? Takara. Yeah, so it says Takara 2003. So if you know anything more about this, I mean, I, I probably could just look look for it, but I haven't really researched it yet. But I just thought it was a cool little figure. And all of these were, um, I think they were 200 yen a piece. So about two bucks a piece. It's a steal. So very happy with these guys. More Ultraman in just a moment. Okay, before I jump completely into all of the Ultraman stuff that I picked up and the junk bag, I want to give a quick quick shout out to my man Jet Jaguar here, uh, who arrived in the mail the same day that I went uh, junk hunting, and I won this in an auction on Yahoo Auctions Japan, and this is a reissue, I believe, uh, could be a brand new tooling. The 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 vintage Sophobi that I've seen of Jet Jaguar looked pretty horrifying. So this this might have been a new sculpt, but this was produced in 2000 by M1, and it's made to you know kind of look like the uh, the Bullmark releases from the 70s. But um, the fact that it's done in a solid flesh tone, kind of like Keshi, and I'm all about that those fleshy Keshi. Uh, I had to go for it, and I got it for a steal on Yahoo Auctions Japan. And I uh, was super happy to get them, so I had to include them. Um, I watched, I recently re-watched um, uh, Godzilla vs. Megalon with my kids a few weeks ago, and they loved Jet Jaguar, and they thought the movie was hilarious. So I've been picking up more Jet Jaguar stuff as I find it. And uh, so this one is a probably a favorite of mine at the moment. Um, I've actually got a miniature version of him, which I forgot to grab. I will stick it up here next to him. These are also recently acquired. I can't remember if I showed these in a pickup video or not, but uh, here he is, uh, I believe roughly the same mold and then here is the hmv glow in the dark version so i'll stick these here yeah super stoked about him and without further ado let's talk about our boy ultraman sorry ultraman okay it's ultra time uh yeah that's 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 a lot of ultraman uh, i found the majority of these at um, the shop with the junk bin. And I actually found almost all of these little guys here in the front in the junk bin. And I believe you saw a couple of them in the video. And I found a couple of those in the, in the junk bin. And um, yeah, I was super stoked. Um, this These little these little kind of uh, off-white ones are some of my favorite ones. They look, they remind me more of like the, the manga adaptation. I, I kind of prefer the off-white uh, color than more than the... Um, the silver, uh, which is also why I like the glow in the dark style Ultraman toys as well. But anyway, the elephant in the room, before we talk about those guys, is this massive giant here. So uh, this was also in the video, and I don't know if you could tell how big this was when I was filming it because he was next to two other figures exactly the same, just slightly different conditions. Uh, but this is a 1983 or 1988, I'm not sure which one because the number's hard to read, uh, jumbo-sized Bandai release. This is one of the earlier Bandai releases, but it still has that classic, like, um, Marusan slash Bullmark kind of look to it. But this was, uh, factory produced, not, not by, you know, not handmade by, like, an old man in a, in a garage, like the other soft finals are. Uh, so he's not as valuable, but he, he is still amazing. And I got him, uh, for a roughly 2000 yen, uh, 20 bucks. And if I pick him up here and uh, bring him close, you can see he's got some scuffs and, and some like crayon marks and stuff on him. So he has been played with, but not like overly damaged. And so I would, I was happy to grab him for that price. And, uh, so yeah, I think this is an amazing piece to add in my collection. He will now be the biggest Ultraman that I have in my collection. But uh, enough about him. Let's jump and talk more about these guys. Let me get a close-up shot. 
by the way, uh, these were kind of a bitch to set up and <laughs> over the years, like the, the different, the different, um, legs and stuff on them are, are slightly different, uh, standing positions just from like heat and, and, you know, having things smushed on top of them. So they don't all stand that well yet. And I, you know, I can correct it with a blow dryer, but it was really hard to get them all to stand up. And, uh, after I finally got them all stood up with that giant one behind them, uh, and I was about to start filming the first time, um, one of them fell down and then it knocked the giant one down and it ruined my backing paper. And then they all, of course, fell down. So I had to set it up again. Anyway, just want to say, it took me some time to set up this shot. All right. So yeah, I found most of these in the junk bin at Mandarake. Um, and I was super happy about it. Real quick, let me talk about a couple of the things that were not in that junk bin. Uh, this being one of them. I did find this at that same shop. Let me focus here. I did find this at that same shop uh, that had all of the Ultraman and Kaiju stuff. Um, but this is a more modern figure. And I do believe I showed finding it on camera. It came in this box right here. And it's one of those kind of uh, Shoto, uh, Shokugan style boxes. And you're supposed to get one of these characters in it. And it was already marked that it was the uh, original Ultraman, which was what I wanted. And it was only just a few hundred yen or something. So I picked it up mainly because it's fully articulated. Uh, well, if articulated in the sense that it's like, it has the same articulation as like a vintage Microman toy does. And uh, I love Microman. So this was kind of a cool little cheap figure to add to uh, my Microman scale three, three quarter uh, articulated figures. If you want something more vintage like this in an action figure form, you need to go for the puppy, uh, was it Real Heroes line? I believe it's called Real Heroes, uh, where it's got the Kenner style articulation. I believe I've talked about that one of my pickups before. Well, anyway, this is a cool little figure. I'm excited to kind of just pose him around and play with him. He also came with another set of hands, which I've put aside somewhere, but you could change it. You could swap his hands out and stuff. And his, his elbows do bend. I don't know if I showed his elbows bending. Whee! All right. Um, so let's talk about these different variants here. Actually, let's get this guy out of the way because these are all fairly similar. Um, I found this at... Microcon, the Mandarake that has all the Keshi and stuff, and I believe I've showed this guy in there too. When I was looking at the Gamera egg that my friend Chris had showed me, by the way, if you're wondering who that guy was in the video, that's my friend Chris. And uh, I decided not to speak in that video, so it was kind of awkward and we did some weird things. So yeah, that's Chris. He's in one of my other uh, previous toy hunting videos. He's, uh, he's a funny guy. He did some strange stuff in the video, but you know, we're strange people. Um, this is, when was this made? Oh, of course, it's Utaka, my favorite toy brand, favorite cheap, cheap toy brand from the 90s, Utaka 1994. And it's just like a little SD uh, Ultraman. And um, nowadays, like this kind of, this kind of like, S, not, not quite like too overly chibi SD, but this kind of scale is uh, pretty popular with like the the modern designer stuff would be like stuff like uh, real head and stuff is kind of the similar proportion. So. This is super cheap. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but it wasn't much at all. And it's a cool little, a cool little Safa B for a very low price. Now let's talk about these guys again. So I mentioned before, I really love this off white on these Ultraman, and there was another, there was a variant. So you could tell that these are all the same mold. These are all the same release, but this is a different release. So this was molded in red plastic, a red soft, red Safa B with like a silver coat. These were molded in the off white with red paint. And uh, let's see if I can get a couple variants of these. Oh, they're all going to fall. Yep. Anyway, let's get these close up here. So I already have one of these um, one of these guys, but they're some of my favorites. But I picked them up because they were just cheap, and I know I could sell them in a, a bundle lot and uh, maybe upgrade the one that I had, which uh, I will do. But I was really excited about this variant because I don't have this one. So this would be for my collection. But if you look on the back... Uh, these say in really small print, basically says Ultraman Super Eye Productions, and it's got the little B, the B for Bandai. If you ever look at a B on the back, you can kind of see it's really tiny right there. It stands for Bandai on their smaller stuff. Um, and these were released in the yeah, early 80s, I believe, 83, I'm thinking. And, uh, but yeah, finding a whole handful of them in that junk bin made my day because I love these guys. And the variant, awesome. Now let's talk about these guys. So you might be wondering, like, wait, what, those are Bandai? Aren't those Poppy? Um, yes and no. So let's see. I believe this middle one here. No, not the middle one. This one. The bright red one. Actually, this one's kind of bright red, too. So this is Poppy. This is Bandai. 
It's the same mold. It's even the same color plastic. Actually, it's not the same mold. The, the head and the color timer is slightly different shape. But the hands and arms and the feet and legs uh, are all the same mold. There's just some slightly different tooling on this other one. But basically, it's near identical. The only way you can tell the difference completely if, uh, if you don't want have one to compare it with is one has a little Poppy logo right there. You can see it right there. Ooh, right there's a Poppy logo. And it says Japan. Still made in Japan, not in China. But then the Bandai one doesn't have that right here. It's just got... It's got the same markings, but it says Bandai right here on his butt. And uh, 1980... Is this 88? See, again, I, I can't tell if you say 88 or 83. But these are all produced around the same time as that giant one. Sometime between 83 and 88. Um, and interestingly, so... Poppy uh, basically was bought out by or turned into Bandai. I'm not exactly sure how that worked. But basically, Poppy ceased to exist as a brand name uh, after the early 80s. And then Bandai started putting things out. And then later, when you see the Poppy name pop back, out, pop back up again, that's after Bandai basically acquired them and uh, basically reissuing stuff. Just like how Hasbro will uh, reissue things with the Kenner name on it because they, they bought out Kenner. Same kind of thing, just for that nostalgic thing. They'll, they'll put the uh, Poppy logo on it these days. But at the time, Bandai was kind of a new thing, so they put their new uh, logo on there proudly. But again, you've got some different color variants here. You've got a darker red on this one, and you've got these bright reds on these two. So these are really cool, and I didn't have these. Also, the gold eyes and then yellow eyes. So there's a couple variants I can add to my collection there. And uh, one that I believe I've already got, so I can add that to the list of things to put up for sale like these guys. All right, let's jump into the next little batch of things, which I believe is the junk bag. Woohoo! Okay, before I dump out the, dump, the junk bag, these are items that I acquired in the, uh, the little junk bag section. Uh, actually, half true. I acquired one in the junk bag section, and then I acquired one at Toy Cats. And Toy Cats had a much better pristine uh, set of boxes here. So these are vintage Ultraman snacks, as you can see here. And this is the little omake prize that would go would be packaged on top like that with plastic wrapped around it. So this has already been removed. I've removed it. And uh, inside here, you've actually got the original chocolate snacks. Um, made by Fujiya, and I don't know what year this was released. I'm going to say that these are, again, like maybe mid to late 80s, could be early 90s, but yeah, they're not gonna be super ancient, but yeah, these these chocolate balls, these chocolate snacks are definitely, we kind of look like, oh, what are they called? Uh, Cocoa Puffs? Definitely not edible anymore. Uh, but hey, I have a Patreon now. <laughs> if you wanna see me eat these, um, you know, sign up for the uh, the uh, the mega bastard um, tier, and uh, then you can tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it because you're paying me. If you want to pay me to eat expired thirty-year-old chocolate balls with Ultraman on the package, I'll do it. Anyway, let's look at the figures that were inside. So, as I said, I've got another box here that was kind of damaged, but uh, I got these guys. So, let's see if I can get these focused properly. We got Ultraman, which may or may not be Ultraman Jack. Um, he's got like the extra, he's got the double lines and stuff. I can't quite tell. I think it might be Ultraman Jack, but anyway, it's Ultraman. And it's got a stamp on the bottom. And this basically comes out, connects into this, and then you can stick him on top of the stamp. And basically, you got a little Keshi Ultraman figure slash stamp. It's really cool. But I don't know if I want to take this off this bruise. I kind of like it displayed like this. And then, luckily, I got one of his nemesis. I got Baltan. And I do like Baltan. He's one of the only uh, Ultraman characters that i starting to collect kaiju-wise. So, yeah. Baltan and Ultraman. Super cool. All right. Junk bag. I promise. And my camera's really out of focus so well. All right. The moment you've been waiting for. The junk bag, um, which I think I mentioned previously that I've already sorted through this, threw away the garbage, took out the interesting stuff, and I'm just going to blow through a lot of this and just show the interesting stuff towards the end. All right, let me dump it all out. Oh, I ripped it. All right, so this was actually from two, like one really big junk bag and a couple kind of smaller ones. Uh, I will show these first. 
So these are all just the standard Keshi that were in there. And I don't think there's a point in dumping this all out. Um, there are some unique ones in here, like like these little uh, plastic ones with the little rollers on the bottom. I guess you could play some kind of game with these. I picked up a Godzilla, and I think last week that was like it was a mo more modern Godzilla that you uh, had the same kind of concept, but you basically could have them fight or knock down things. Uh, there were a few little interesting ones in here, but I, I, I've taken most of the really good stuff out. Um, but yeah. Anyway, most of this stuff's going to be up for sale, so I will separate it and take pictures and whatnot. But if you want to claim this whole bag, let me know. It's for sale. All right, the next little lineup here of stuff are these little Shokugan toys. Um, so you've got some ships. You've got some uh, hard plastic uh, Ultraman guys. These are not catchy. Uh, some little minis. As well, I've got a couple Red Kings and different color variants, and some little SD still sealed in packages of uh, Red King. And I know, I know who's gonna want these. And some other Kaiju, I right, doubles, and uh, another triples. I think he's missing an arm. Oh, his arm's over there. And Pigamon, this little tiny Pigamon, Pigamon. And man, this was disappointing. This is not the this is not the first time that I've had a bolt on with a missing arm, but um, I saw that he, he was like limbless in the package. But I saw this one sticking out, so I was like, oh, he's gotta have he's gotta have both arms in there because he's so cool. He's he's translucent, kind of a uh, turquoise color, light tur light turquoise. He's got um, he's just got a nice sculpt, and just really cool looking. But unfortunately, he's missing that arm. And I think one of the last junk pickups I got a large Keshi. Uh, uh, Balton that was missing arms and made me sad. So one of these days I hope to find a big Balton that doesn't have a missing arm. What does everyone do with these arms? Alright, let me get these out of the way. Um, you know what? I forgot the theory. I forgot there were Dragon Ball stuff in here. Then I'll go back to the Ultraman. So in this little Dragon Ball lot here, there was some good stuff. Uh, there was this little SD Pan uh, finger puppet, and I know a few ladies, uh, fellow collector friends that love Pan. Um, so if they don't have this, this will probably just be a gift to one of them if they claim it first. Let me know, ladies. Um, also, there were just some standard, some standard Keshi in here. Actually, this little small series is a good one, a good little series that are harder to find. But yeah, these will all be up for sale, and some painted Keshi. Uh, I'm debating if I want to keep these or sell these because I, I kind of dig these. You got Goten and Trunks doing the fusion dance. And you've got Mystic Gohan. Cool. And the main reason I bought that bag were for these little uh, metal dudes. Actually, let me show these first. These are also sold in uh, Gashapon machines with Keshi. And these were kind of like little special guys. And I needed this Go Goku sculpt. And I don't think I have Dr. Gero either, so I was happy to get these two for my collection. And there was also a double, uh, different color of Goku that looks like he's got ketchup or something on him. I need to clean that off. And a couple little, uh, I believe these are both Gohan. I think this is, I think I have this one. This is like a teen Gohan, or like older teen Gohan, like when he's in high school. And then uh, him with the Saiyan Man suit on, which I'm not sure if I have that one either. So if I don't already have these, these will be for sale as well. All right, that's all the Dragon Ball stuff. And before I get to the final little bag of the, the best of the best little interesting Ultraman things that I picked out, I did get these. And I found a bunch of these uh, not too long ago as well. So I have an ever-growing collection of these and also an ever-growing selection that are for sale. And actually, a friend of mine that runs a uh, toy shop in Kentucky... Uh, I believe bought the first lot of these guys, so I think he'll probably end up taking these too. So, but yeah, a lot of different Ultraman Ace, mostly Ultraman Ace stuff it looks like, and all the characters from that, and maybe some Ultra 7, and also some little mini Sophobi. These were kind of cool. So, again, a lot of stuff in that junk bag. Uh, ended up having to throw away some stuff that was like broken and junky, but here's the best of the best, this little bag here. Let's open this up. Because I love the little things that were in here. Cream of the crop. And these are all from my collection. 
All right, let's start off with uh, just the basics that I, I just picked out because I thought they were cool. First are just these little uh, Ultraman and Balton Keshi, mini, mini Keshi. I like Mini Keshi and especially uh, of characters that I like the most. And so far, these are my two favorite characters. And uh, so I, had, I grabbed a couple little clean versions of them. And I'm not sure how old this one this is. I think this is a rather old one. This one looks more modern. It's probably from the 90s. I'm going to guess this is from like the mid-90s. This looks a bit older. But I'm um, still learning about the Ultraman Keshi. I know a lot about Dragon Ball Keshi. I don't know about a lot of the other Keshi. Um, I picked out this guy from that lot over there. Um, there are so many of these type of uh, painted Keshi dudes that I am just sticking with just the original Ultraman. And as you may know, I my Ultraman collection focuses on just the original Ultraman, not, not Jack or any of the other characters. Other than... Father of Ultra and Mother of Ultra, I love them, and I already have them in this pose. But here you've got, uh, you've got, uh, I almost said Goku. <laughs> you've got Ultraman uh, in the cross position, you know, sacrifices himself like Jesus. Jesus! Uh, next, we have a little trio, and I love these. These look so cool and retro. I don't know when these were made. These had to have come out in the late 70s or mid 70s or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, you've got Ultraman Ace, which I've never watched. But uh, I've been learning so much about Ultraman recently. And I've ordered all the Blu-ray sets that I thought were, would be good that have uh, recently come out in English. So I am familiar with Ace. And I like this figure. So I will probably hold on to that. Especially since it goes with these two guys, which you've got you got your regular Ultraman. Uh, could be Jack. He's got the lines. But I'm just going to call him regular Ultraman. And he's got silver boobies. And he's awesome. And I love figures that are painted on the front but not painted on the back. I love that. Anytime I see a figure like that, I buy it. And then you've got this guy who I had to ask Chris about. And he said this was uh, Ultra King or King of Ultra, something like that. Anyway, he's a fucking pimp. So he's staying in the collection. Unless you want to bribe me, uh, this guy's staying. And my, f my two favorite pickups are these right here. I think uh, almost of the entire day. These two right here just take the cake. So as I said, I like Mother of Ultra. So here we've got Mother of Ultra as a pterodactyl skeleton. I mean, for real. This is crazy. And I believe this is uh, kind of a, a theme in the 70s uh, of uh, like the little omake uh, prize toys is having skeleton or monster versions of some of the characters like it would be like a secret special one and i'm sure if you're a kid this would be like whoa this is so crazy and even for me i was like whoa this is so crazy i love it i need to clean it up still but yeah mother of ultra bone pterodactyl thing i love it and another mo mother of ultra ultra mom uh this ultra mom keshi uh that is translucent and full of rainbow glitter. I mean, how fucking awesome is that? I'm pretty sure they made some of the other characters in this uh, this style. I need to find all of these. But having Mother of Ultra in, in the rainbow is... The rainbow glitter is just amazing. I love it so much. Also, bonus. I picked this up at Toy Cats after I left. Uh, after I left Nakano... Uh, like I said, I went to Toy Cats. Yeah, I just said that like five times. Um, in one of my previous pickup videos, I picked up the Salaryman Heroes Ultraman uh, figures, like with them in the train, or Ultraman falling asleep on the train and whatnot. Everyone commented saying that they loved those, so I went back and I bought the rest of the case. And um, I also found one of Wave 3 at Mandarake, which I show on camera. So... Uh, I did open this up, and I did... I haven't opened the plastic, but I did check to see what was inside. And I got this one right here, where they're looking at uh, charts, and Ultraman's freaking out, and he's sweating. But I really, really, really want to find this one with Ultraman, like, just get, barely getting through the train doors. And just, like, look at the look at the facial expression on the other dude. This is just so awesome. I gotta find that one. But yeah, I picked up, and I've got some more of these, and... These will all be for sale, so if you want some of those, let me know. All right, guys, that's it. This is all the stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if you're interested in any of the stuff that I said was going to be for sale, 
And there's also some other stuff that I've picked up recently uh, through auctions and whatnot that will be up for sale. Again, you can find most of that stuff at Instagram. Follow me on Instagram at Tokyo Toy Bastard. I've also got a Facebook page you can find. Uh, all the links are going to be below. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I just started a Patreon. So if you would like to support me and help me <laughs> get more of this junk to show you guys and help support me go on uh, more toy hunts to places I normally wouldn't go to because, you know, funds and traveling expenses and whatnot. Uh, and if you would like to have early access to videos, bonus videos, or um, first dibs on things that I find, and some other fun stuff, you know, I'm still I just started. So uh, if you have if you have ideas for uh, things to add to the Patreon tiers, let me know. But yeah, uh, until then, um, check it out, and I will see you guys uh, on the next video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't.